So we have a request from Chief Judge Freeman of the <coughs> Municipal Court uh, that you appoint Ms. Ashley Deadweiler Newman as an associate judge. Uh, with the increasing will with the court, uh, it is the judge's feeling and the administration agrees that we need to have a designated associate judge to recommend you proceed for it. Thank you, Mr. Gilmore. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. Gilmore's staff concerning this item? Hearing none, I'll, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we appoint the associate judge to the municipal court as described. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 5 are recognitions presentations. 5A is a presentation to Mayor Council from the Georgia Association of Water Professionals. Ms. Kelly? I have a yes, sir. You got Eric Osborne from the Georgia Association of Water Professionals. I think he's got a few words and he's got some places he's going to hand out, and I got the group behind him. Very good. Yeah, I'm uh, Eric Osborne with uh, several hats on today. <laughs> I'm representing uh, the Georgia Association of Water Professionals and the Georgia section of the American Water Works Association. And the city of Perry, as you can see, has racked up some hardware this year. <laughs> And I'm here to officially present some of these to them in front of you all so that you know what a great water and wastewater system you have and great personnel that you have working here. Uh, something to be very proud of. Uh, the first thing I'd like to present is something that they get to have bragging rights for for a whole year. And they won the best tasting tap water in all of District 5, which composes of, I don't know, probably about 10 counties in this local area. So they actually came to Columbus and competed, and we had two different panels of judges, one in the morning, and they won the morning competition and went on to the finals, and uh, they did not win the state recognition, but they did win District 5, so that's a big honor to have for a whole year. So I'd like to give this to you, Sharon and Travis. So that's a great honor. And I, um, the next thing is they also achieved perfect compliance in water and wastewater for the year 2018 and they got the gold award for that the next step for them will be after they pass five years will be a platinum award and uh, it's nice to rack these up on the wall too because staying in perfect compliance in both water and wastewater is not easy to do uh, and if you looked at the list of people who weren't in compliance, you'd realize that. So <laughs> I'll give this to Corey. And while Corey's standing up here, Corey also received for District 5 the top wastewater operator of the year, which is a, a huge honor of all the wastewater operators in this whole district. He was the voted by his peers as the number one operator in this district. Congratulations. <laughs> And while we're staying, while Sharon's close by, she got the top stormwater <coughs> operator of the year, which is the same thing. All of District Five, she uh, got voted by her peers as the best uh, stormwater operator. Okay. Congratulations! Okay. Now 
now they have a couple of larger ones. They also received this year, and I know because I'll be up here for a while. Uh, they also received the best water reclamation facility in the, in, in the category of 1.1 to 10 million gallons a day. So everybody in the whole state of Georgia that's in that size category, they won after going through a rigorous inspection. They were selected by points and percentages to be the number one plant of the year. That's not in the district, that's statewide. And the other thing they also received in the category, and this is for the groundwater serving three to 8.99 million gallons a day, best operated water plant of the year. So your water and your wastewater plants were scored the highest of anybody in the state in that category. So Travis, it's, it's my pleasure of, when you hear the city of Perry now, everybody recognizes the place of quality and excellence, and I appreciate the hard work that these guys do, and they're all very active in our associations too, which is a very important aspect. They all are inspectors and do things uh, to, to inspect other places around the state, which makes the whole state better. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Right, Peter, if I can add just a minute, uh, I think Mr. Gilmore has uh, told y'all we've made some changes in personnel recently, so I brought this gentleman with me here tonight. Travis Falcione is going to be taking Ryan Bowie's position. Okay, Ryan is going to be slid over here, still be here. Uh, Mr. Chip Anderson from uh, Water Robbins, Georgia, will be taking assistance project manager. I'm going to get their names, numbers to everybody. Our focus is to uh, pay more attention to customer service. You know, work orders have went up, we slacked off. Um, we got to bring that back to our attention. And so we've made some personnel changes to reflect that. If y'all have any problem, you got my number, please call me. Okay? Thank y'all very much. I appreciate your support. Sharon, can I get y'all to go up there so I can take a picture? Yes. Ms. Kelly, why y'all come up here? I want to commend you. And Mr. Osborne, thank you for still here for taking time to come represent your organization to make this presentation. It doesn't go unnoticed. I appreciate y'all very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. We love, we love the opportunity to work here. Well, I'll help hold some here. Oh, she's got you one. Everybody get some Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I come from Warren Robbins, been with DSU for seven years, got a maintenance background, um, and I appreciate Don too and, and Warren Park. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Thank you all Thank you. <laughs> Mayor, a point of privilege, if I may, before you move on, would you join me in the council? on behalf of this council we would like to thank you for your nine and a half years of outstanding leadership and the things that you have done over those nine and a half years to move Perry forward we're really proud of the city we have and your leadership had significant impact on us being where we are today and I just can't thank you enough for your service and your friendship over the years and helping me do my job well too so thank you very much and we We'll really miss you, and this is our last meeting, and we just wanted to say, you know, give you a warm send-off, and thank you very much for your leadership. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to get one at the end, okay. but, but um, I, I can do it now. <laughs> well, you want to, I'd like to give the council members a chance speak to you Absolutely. and you can speak to Absolutely. us and have the last word. Thank 
Mayor, I'd like to thank you for your uh, leadership and vision for the city over the past nine and a half years. Um, your vision has led to the uh, creation of a lot of programs and initiatives uh, that will continue to move forward long after uh, you have left us. Uh, I look very forward to working together with this council to continue your legacy and to continue uh, uh, making Perry that much greater of a place to live. I thank you and I appreciate you. And, <laughs> I, have been, I have enjoyed working with you for the last nine and a half years. Uh, Start off kind of well because you couldn't take care of yourself. Every time you looked up, you fell down. You <laughs> were thinking about bubble wrapping you. <laughs> but you've done an excellent job for the city of Perry. I think it's a bad time to leave, but if you must go, you must go. I've enjoyed your friendship also. Mm -hmm. Well, I like to say that. I'm grateful and I'm thankful for you. These nine and a half years that I have learned a lot being a councilman and I thank you for your attitude and the way that you carry yourself in and about in our community. And we appreciate how you handle yourself in that behalf. And so we thank you and we wish you all the success and thank you for being here in the city to move the city forward. We appreciate it and thank you. Thank you. Maybe it was 10, 12 years ago, never dreamed we'd be here or had served in the past that we have for the last almost 10 years. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Jimmy and I live near each other, and he and the former fire chief and I used to walk every morning together and never even talked about running for office. <laughs> so, it's been a good ride. Uh, good working with you. Good we'll mission. Well, we wish you well in your new endeavors. We wish you the best. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one thing to volunteer to do work. It's another thing to get paid for it. And it's an entirely different thing to get elected to do it. If you've never been there, it's kind of hard to explain that feeling. But I can tell you this. I have thoroughly enjoyed most of the time <laughs> that I have served the citizens of Perry, and I have thoroughly enjoyed working with these fine women and men that you see standing before you, and also the staff that you see seated before you. Most of you have heard me say these words, and I'll say them one more time. Our job is to set vision is to answer the tough questions, set policy, hire the right people for the positions on staff, and then get out of the way and let them do their job. They deserve as much credit because they are the ones that actually carry forward the initiatives that this body puts forward. They bring us the suggestions. We don't always take them all, but we do listen every single time they have something to say we listen to the public every time they have something to say i think that's critical communication is one of the keys to success the communication that this body has standing beside me is second to none the friendships are there but that is a side note not to demean or belittle it but our working relationship is second to none. That is critical. And that's one, if not the main reason, that this city is so successful, is a combination of things. It's not <coughs> me, it's not any one individual, it's a collective and group effort that extends beyond this body, it extends beyond the staff, it extends beyond the employees who also carry the load directly into the community on a daily basis every single day of the year day in and day out month in and month out year in and year out because the communication from our constituents continues to happen we make adjustments and those adjustments are positive and responsive and fun a lot of fun 
There have been some changes in the city of Perry over the last nine and a half years. It thrills me to no end to be a part of that. It does sadden me for, for me to decide to leave at this time, but it is selfishly the right thing for me to do. And I appreciate your thoughts, your kind words, and your understanding. And I will miss it. I miss each and every one of you. I miss the staff. I will. I won't miss the late night phone calls. <laughs> My grandma used to say, if anybody calls after 9 o'clock at night, it's never good news. <laughs> and that's usually true uh, from that standpoint. But you can still handle it. Because at that point in time, and this is a key element, the situation is already under control. It's just relating information. These men and women don't need help doing their job. That's why we hire them. They communicate and they make sure that everybody knows what's happening. I told these men and women when I first took office that the, one of the most important things that's going to happen, and they didn't believe me then, but I think they do now, is that they would always be informed. And I have tried during this entire time to make certain that they are. And that's important. They have every bit of information that I get, barring with very few exceptions, in order to make an informed decision. He, any one of these men and women can tell you anything about the city of Terry that I can. And I think that's critical. That's one of the best ways, in my opinion, to be successful in <coughs> any organization, but specifically the city of Perry. All I have to say now is thank you to each one of you for the dedication, for the service, for the commitment, for the integrity, and for your friendship. And for caring enough to continue doing this job. It's not easy. If you ever want to know what it's like to live in a glass house, get elected to something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. <coughs> it is my honor and has been to serve the citizens of Perry, this council, the staff, and employees for the city of Perry. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mayor, Kim, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> The plaque reads presented to Mayor Jimmy Faircloth for outstanding leadership as Mayor of Perry, May of 2019. So thanks again. I wanted everybody to know what was on there. Thank you for your words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now you'll take the time to meet support for the balloon event and dogwood festival um, we have you've heard me say many times we're really trying to step up our um, hot air balloon event and the whole festival weekend not only making the event and out at the fairgrounds uh, bigger <coughs> larger and uh, more impactful for our community but also thanks to Deborah and Scott's leadership um, this year we wanted to a uh, special um, addition to our thank yous and that is why we are post event presenting these and 
Deborah created not just a, a unique card for our sponsors, but also it includes the signature of each one of our pilots. So we were unable to present prior. Um, but I think the best words, if I can just read the card to all the city council. To Mary City Council, thank you for the city's support of the Chamber's annual Dogwood Festival and Hot Air Balloon Fest. We are blessed to have your partnership on this and other platforms of our work in our community. Respectfully, Darlene McLendon, President and CEO of Perry Chamber. So um, I'm going to let them talk about what they have and to conserve time, we'll come up and, and we'll stage our presentations and let Ellen grab photos. Mary Council, thank you uh, for hearing us out. Uh, just wanted to extend a thank you from the Perry Area Chamber of Commerce and our Education uh, Committee for your support of our uh, Perry Youth Leadership Program. Uh, we just graduated 25 students. Uh, Deborah is a co-leader, Dan Purdue is a co-leader, and, and I'm a co-leader on that in that group. Uh, 25 students from Veterans High School, Perry High School, and Westfield High School. And uh, Deborah documented the year. And you will see in there, there's the city government day, which the kids loved. Uh, they they uh, had an election for mayor. We had a couple of people that wanted to run for mayor. And uh, that's unusual. Usually you, you ask kids, who wants to be mayor? And they all duck their head. We had two of them that said, I want to be mayor. And, and uh, we, we had a little election in the back room, which was, was kind of cool. Uh, so these kids were very engaged. And we thank you for your support of that. And so what we'd like to do is present you with our yearbook uh, that we have. And thank you for all the support you do and all the, um, uh, that you do for education and you help us out. So we'd like to, to present you with our yearbook. And if I may add, I, I want to, again, the Perry Chamber, we're very strong. We've got some really great platforms of work. And I'm not bragging on myself. I'm bragging on the membership <coughs> organization, the leadership. But again, with our youth leadership program, um, Scott, Deborah, and Dan Purdue are co-chairs of that. Um, this year, we went back and our graduating PYL students from two years ago, the prior class, we presented them red and um, gold honor cords. And that will be another tradition of ours that they'll take forward. And I will tell you that all the schools were so appreciative of that. And that's just another mark of their heritage here in Perry. So I want to thank them in front of you, but I also want you to know that, again, the Chamber is striving to make sure that all of our platforms are reaching higher and higher uh, levels of excellence in your community. Fantastic. Thank you all very much for what y'all did. Any other community partners who wish to get this evening update at this time? Thank you. Item seven is citizens with input. Are there any citizens who wish to address council at this time? Yes, please state your name. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jim Holloway. I live at 901 Washington Street. I'm Robert. Um, I want to bring up something that would probably fall into the heading of a complaint. Um, we, some of the logging trucks from Tossin Lumber like to cut through Gilmer and make a left turn onto Washington and have been cutting across the corner of our yard. Uh, I don't know that they're all from Tossin Lumber, but I have personally witnessed that several that are from the lumber company. And yesterday when I went to cut, cut the grass, we had, oh, let me back up. We installed, we put uh, a big landscape rock on the corner. It's on the easement between the sidewalk and the street to kind of stop that 
cut across the yard stuff but um, it worked for a while but then when I went out to cut the grass yesterday I uh, saw the rock had been physically pushed back and broken uh, grass all torn up big ruts going across the corner again um, I took lots of pictures of, unfortunately I wasn't able to print any of them out for you to look at but um, just wanted to know if there is not already a city ordinance that would prohibit commercial traffic coming through there and if not would you consider instituting an ordinance of that kind? We did call the police. The police came out and uh, took the information and said we're going to make a, an informational report. And uh, my wife went and talked, well, tried to talk to the folks at Tolleson. She went into the office and there was nobody there anywhere. So, um, she did, you signed in, right? You left your name and number. Again, so. um, just trying to trying to find a solution. I mean, it, we live in the historic district. We've done a lot of work in the yard. Uh, it looks really nice. Um, um, so, you know, we'd like, to, we'd like for the traffic not to be tearing it up. Thank you, sir. I, I can appreciate your concerns, Mr. Gilmore. Can you address this situation? We will, but the trucks are prohibited from being on the yeah. streets. Right. Okay. That's well, not a designated truck but ride. They come there's, all no, the time. there's no signs. There's no signs. So. That I've seen. So. I don't know if a sign would help, but uh, police officer. Yeah, carry out. Well, they one of the things I'm considering doing is installing a security camera, <coughs> so try and capture. I have stopped so. several of the trucks because I hear them coming, and I run out to the porch and I tell them, "You can't come through here," and they'll back down. But that's not. Yeah, all we don't. We can't catch them all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, may I please have your name? Liz Holloway. Anyone else like to address council? <coughs> Thank you. Item 8 is the review of minutes. Item 8, they counsel for your consideration. You have been provided the minutes of the May 6th, 2019 work session, the May 7th, 2019 pre council meeting, and the May 7th, 2019 council meeting. Please note that Council Member William Jackson is absent from the May 6th, 2019 work session. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that we approve these minutes as presented. So moved. That's a motion and a second. Are there any additions, deletions, changes, or discussion regarding these minutes at this time? Excuse myself. Thank you. Hearing no other, all those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, raise your hand. Please let the record indicate that Mr. Jackson recuses himself from the May 6th work session vote. The motion passes. Thank you. <coughs> Item 9 is old business. Item 9A or ordinances for a second reading and adoption. Item 9A1 is a second reading of an ordinance to control shareable dock and dockless mobility devices, also known as e-scooters. Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, this is, as you said, the second reading of an ordinance uh, that will, um, first of all, define what shareable uh, dockless devices are dockless mobility devices and do shareable docked mobility devices. It also prohibits them in the city of Perry um, because there have been issues in other communities with safety, um, particularly with the dockless uh, facilities, but this will uh, also provide for an opportunity for any company that wants to, that may want to move forward to work with us uh, to come up with appropriate regulations and test those out before we make a final decision on it. So at this time it would prohibit them until until such time as we, we make modifications. I'll be happy to answer any questions we have. Thank you, Mr. Wood. At this time, is there anyone in the public who wishes to have a comment regarding this ordinance as described? Any member of council have any questions for Mr. Wood regarding this report? <coughs> Hearing none. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve and adopt this ordinance to control shareable docked 
and dockless mobility devices as described. So there's a motion and a second. All those in favor say yay. Yay. All in opposed say nay. Hearing none. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Ms. Newby, is that close enough? <laughs> we had to change the way we do ordinance voting, so thank you. Item 9A2 is the second reading of an ordinance rezoning property from R-3 multifamily residential district to OC office commercial district. The property is located at 900 Ball Street, tax map number 0P0040035000. Mr. Wood. Yes, Mayor. Uh, thank you. This application, as you mentioned, is to rezone property. It's located at the corner of Ball Street and uh, Gilmer Street. It's uh, 0 0.3 um, acres of land. It has a, a house on it right now that is about uh, a little less than 1,200 square feet. Uh, the, uh, that area of Ball Street has been a transition in the past. A number of properties have previously been changed from residential classification to commercial planning commission and the staff both recommend approval of this request thank you mr wood at this time is there any member of the public who wishes to comment regarding this ordinance as described what kind of commercial activities would be conducted there the uh, the um, request is for an office commercial district so it's going to be primarily office uses or low impact uh, commercial uses the applicant in this case is requesting that it be an office and meeting space um, and potentially go back to residential so they're probably going to put in a parking lot right there there may need to be a parking lot yes but it would say um it would be limited because of the size of the house true any other comments <coughs> yes. I speak in favor of it. I am the um, applicant for it. So Please if you have any Please further questions, you. Angela Cutie. Um, so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any other comments from the public? I guess my only other comment would be, if you don't mind there is um, that it would only be a short term maybe a years or maybe a year or two at the most um, we're really just using it as an office space until the renovation of the new Perry hotel is complete oh okay yes. yeah I'm, I'm on the property that abuts the back oh okay the well, come together it's yeah. nice to meet right. you <laughs> any other comments Any member of council have any questions regarding this second reading of the ordinance as described? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we adopt this second reading of the ordinance rezoning property from R3 to OC at 900 Ball Street as described. So, we have a motion and a second. Mr. King, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say yay. <coughs> yay. yay. Opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Item 9A3 is a second reading of an ordinance rezoning property from R-1 single family residential district to GU government use district. The property is located at 1020 Country Club Road, tax map number 0P0410015000. Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, this is the property, the 61 plus acres that the city purchased uh, from uh, the former um, Cherokee Pines Golf Course uh, that you intend to use as a passive park. Uh, the property um, is currently zoned R1 single family residential. Um, it's certainly not going to be used that way. There's also some limitations on sewer capacity in that area that also makes it unusable. Um, the uh, GU classification is the government use classification uh, that applies to most all other city-owned properties um, and the planning commission and staff both recommended approval of that classification for this property thank you mr wood is there any member of the public who wishes to comment regarding this second reading of the ordinance rezoning from r1 to gu at 1020 country club road is described mm -hmm. Any member of 
council have any questions regarding this particular item at this time? From hearing none at this time, I'll entertain a motion that we adopt this, re this ordinance, rezoning project from R1 to GU at 1020 Country Club Road, as described. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say yay. 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 Opposed say nay. Hearing no opposition, motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 10 is any other old business. Item 10A is any other old business from the mayor. I have none. Item 10B is any other old business from council members. Ms. Fine and Grace? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Walker? No. Mr. Hunt? No. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Kent? No, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Item 10C is any other old business from the city manager, Mr. Gilmore? No, sir. Thank you. Item 10D is any other old business from the assistant city manager, Mr. Smith? No, sir. Thank you. Item 10E is any other old business from the city attorney, Ms. Newby? Yes, sir. Thank you. Item 11 is new business. Item 11A are matters that have been referred from the May 20th, 2019 work session to go yesterday evening and the May 21st, 2019 pre council meeting that we had earlier this evening. There is one item that is not on the agenda. We are being asked to enter or to authorize uh, the city to enter into an agreement between Red Lagoon LLC and the city of Perry. Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, as we talked about in pre-council, uh, there is a parcel land located uh, near the intersection of Langston Road and Houston Lake Road that currently is used for a storm, regional stormwater detention pond, and we'd like to have council authorization to proceed with the purchase of that parcel. We currently have an easement, but we'd be better off to have this purchased and the seller's agreement. Mr. Gilmore, is any member of council have any questions of Mr. Gilmore regarding this item? Hearing none at this time, I will entertain a motion that we authorize the city to enter into an agreement between Red Lagoon LLC and the city of Perry as described. So, so, so motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Ms. Madam Perry, did you raise your hand? Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 11A1 is a resolution establishing the criteria for classifying city streets. Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, as, you, as we discussed last night in the pre in the uh, workshop, um, the city is asking you to approve a resolution uh, addressing how we would uh, look at city streets in the future, um, how arterial streets would be designated those would be all state routes and any city street connecting those state routes. Uh, minor, or excuse me, major collector streets would be any street having a thousand um, uh, average daily trip or more. And minor streets would be any city street with an average daily trip of 300 to 999. Um, and then local streets would be all other streets. We're also uh, recommending that on those um, designated streets, the arterials, major and minor collectors, uh, that any sidewalks that are repaired, upgraded, or constructed would be built according to the city's design of concrete with brick banding um, within the right-of-way. Um, the striping would be according to uh, federal guidelines. Uh, there would be no speed bumps on these streets. Um, they would have uh, 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 speed limits established by the police department. Um, and we would look at how to regularly monitor for speed. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Does any member of council have any questions regarding this item? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we approve the resolution establishing criteria for classifying city street streets as described. So so There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Item 11B is the award of bids. 11B1 is a bid for light towers. Mr. Worthington. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Council, uh, tonight we're asking you to award the bid for solicitation number 2019-24, which is the purchase of four portable light towers. Um, as part of this solicitation, we are directly contacted 11 vendors. Uh, we received nine bids ranging from $28,780 to $47,600. Uh, 
it is staff's recommendation that we would award this bid to Evergreen Specialty Services, which was the low bidder for $28,780. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Questions, Council? Hearing none, at this time I'm going to entertain a motion that we award this bid to the low bidder of Evergreen Specialty Services in the amount of $28,780 as described. So move second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Item 11C, we're being asked to approve the 2019 CHIP grant agreement. Mr. Wood? Yes, Mayor. This is the agreement with the city and the Department of Community Affairs for the $300,000 CHIP grant or Community Home Improvement Program grant that we received and uh, we've already approved a grant specialist of Georgia to administer that grant. So we just need you to approve the actual receipt of that as I mentioned. <coughs> Thank you Mr. Wood. Does any member of council have any questions regarding this item? Hearing none. At this time I'll entertain a motion that we approve the 2019 CHIP grant agreement as described. So I'm moving. Moving. A motion in the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 11D, our special event applications. 11D1, the City of Perry is hosting Perry War Battle. Ms. Turpin. Thank you, Mayor and Council. On Saturday, June 29th, from noon to 1 p.m., following the Independence Day Parade hosted by the Chamber of Commerce, um, the City of Perry will once again be hosting the Perry Water Battle, which invites the young and the young at heart. Um, to come out and participate in an all-out water battle complete with dueling fire trucks, slip and slides, water balloons, squirt guns, toddler swimming pools, and numerous other ways to have fun in the water. Um, we will wrap up the event with a free lunch for the first 200 participants. And what we are asking for today is for approval of the event to be hosted on public property at Rosier Park, um, as well as for personnel and equipment support from fire and emergency services, the police department, and leisure services. Thank you, Ms. Turpin. Does any member of council have any questions regarding this particular event? Hearing none, at this time I will entertain a motion that we approve the application for the city period hosting the period war battle of Roger Park as described. So There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Item 11D2, the city period is hosting period presents. Ms. Turpin. Thank you. Mayor and Council, the City of Perry will be hosting a new summer series of free lawn concerts at Heritage Park in the City of Perry um, for community and visitors to enjoy an evening at Perry as they kick off their weekend. Um, each event in this series will feature one band playing from approximately 7 to 9 p.m. And the events will be held on Friday, June 20th, Friday, June, July 26th, and Friday, August 23rd. And what we are asking for is approval for the event to be hosted on public property at Heritage Park. Um, and with permission for the public to bring coolers to the event, as well as police to provide personnel, staff, for event security. Thank you, Mr. Erpen, is any member of council have any questions regarding this item? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we approve the application for the City of Perry hosting Perry Presents for the summer series of long concerts at various dates as described. So, so is there a motion, is there a second? Second. And a second, any discussion? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that date is wrong. I think Friday the 21st, June 21st, instead of June 20th. Very well, maybe. Yeah, June 20th is on Thursday, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. Is it? That is true. Okay. Thank you. That is good to know. Yeah. 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 We don't want to do a Friday night concert on a Thursday night. That would not be <laughs> Okay, so Friday, June 21st. Thank you very much. No other discussion. Would the person who made the motion be amenable to changing one of these dates from the 20th to the 21st? Yes. And the person who made the second, the same question. Thank you. Thank you. Council understands the change in the motion. Since there's no more discussion, all those in favor of the amended motion, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Item 12, a council member items. Ms. Bonham Grace. Mr. Jones. One item there I would like to point out is giving your 
involvement in the Perry Music Festival, and, and uh, I think it's very fitting that the last act that you preside over as mayor will be to continue in that spirit with um, concerts and heritage bar. So if there was a sign that you needed that your legacy will continue, I offer that. I know what it's for. Uh, uh, that's all. Thank you. Mr. Walker? No, sir. Mr. Huh? No, sir. Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Gilmore? No, sir. Thank you. Mr. Smith? No, sir. And Ms. Newton? Yes, sir. Thank you. Item 13, the department head and staff items. We'll start with our clerk and Scott. Do you have any for us? No, sir. Thank you. Department of Community Development. Mr. Wood? Nothing further. No, sir. Thank you. From the Economic Development Department. Um, yes, Mayor and Council, uh, just a reminder that tomorrow our Downtown Development Authority is hosting our World Zone Lunch and Learn at 11.30 at the Perry Art Center um, to 1 o'clock. We have staff from DCA presenting the tax credit and revolving loan program, and uh, we have over 40 uh, people coming that represent uh, tax professionals, downtown property owners, uh, lots of prospects, about five that are coming, and, uh, and um, future tenants and uh, developers as well. So we're excited about uh, those that have RSVP'd and we do still have a few more spots open. Um, I know that some of you all will be there, so we're looking forward to tomorrow. Thank you. Very good, thank you. From the police department, Major Phelps. Yes, sir. Thank you. Fire Emergency Services, Chief Parker. Yes, no, sir. Thank you. Our media specialist, Ms. Palmer. Nothing tonight, sir. Thank you. Ms. Turpin, anything further? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, Mayor and Council, despite the heat, uh, last Saturday we did have a successful first Soapbox Derby and May Day Festival here in the city of Perry. Um, it was really, really hot, and apparently it gets hotter than that here, I've been told. So, <laughs> really looking forward to summer. Um, but I, I just wanted to say thank you, first of all, to Councilwoman Ryan Grace for coming out and volunteering her time to participate in the art festival. Um, she did serve as our model for the high school throwdown, and this is the portrait that she selected from the students that did her self-portrait. Um, but there were numerous other fascinating works that these students put out. Um, so although they're not here tonight, I did also want to thank the Perry High School um, Arts Department for participating. They were a vital part of our event. Um, as well as the entire Houston County school system for sending their art uh, students to come in and really demonstrate their work. I think it was great to have professional artists there, um, but also people were really inspired by seeing the students do their work. So thank you again for your time and for your participation. We're gonna frame this and put it in City Hall um, for everyone to look at. Um, and for next year, if any of the other councilmen or mayor would like to come and be our model, I'm sure we'll be looking for someone, so keep that in mind. How can we possibly top that? <laughs> we have to find a very nice hat. We have some great hats. So. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> On the main street. I, I can't. Sorry. I can't follow that. <laughs> yes, no, sir. Nothing tonight. Mr. Worthington, Mr. Worthington, Mr. Thank you. Item 14, the general public items. Does any member of the general public wish to address council at this time? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. My name is Becky Wood. I'm at 426 Sandifer Road. And I have some information to give to you, and, and I'm going to address it. But I want to do have it in front of you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's highlighted as America. First, let me uh, call your attention to where I paper clipped the page. Well, actually, what this is, is this is the packet that was presented to the county for the rezoning uh, and annexation of uh, property at the corner of Danny Carpenter and Sandifer Road. And um, in that package is the information from the seat. And I have... Uh, highlighted and paper clip the page that I'm going to uh, address. And uh, in the yellow, it talks about all vehicular, vehicular access shall be from Danny Carpenter Drive to limit adverse vehicular impact on houses across Sandifer. 
then it talks about a buffer and so forth. Well, guess what? There is, they are, the developer is building an access onto St. Nicola Road. Now this, this information came from the city of Perry. It was in the packet presented to the, to the county. Okay, the county <coughs> at first objected to the zoning uh, because of the density, the um, uh, commercial aspect, and so forth. Uh, so our concern is that if, if the city has presented this, that there's no going to be any access, that they presented it to the county, there's no going to be any access onto San Diego Road from that subdivision, then why is the developer building an access to San Diego Road from that subdivision? Then on the next page, I will bring, there is an error that I need to bring to your attention. Because in that packet, it says the city ran a sanitary sewer main line in this area to service Mossy Creek Middle School, but also in anticipation that other properties in the area would annex for sewer services. And I beg to differ with that because we have documentation that that particular sewer line was built for one reason. February 25th, 2003, there is a letter from the city of Perry, and I'll read just the paragraph, it's just a paragraph. On February 24, 2003, the city of Perry approved an agreement to provide sewer services for the development of Wooden Eagle LLC located at the southwestern quadrant of the intersection of Lake Joy Road and Santa Fe Road. The agreement assumes the parcel will be phased for R2 and R3 development according to Houston County Board of Commission standards. Additionally, the city will contact the Houston County Board of Com Commissioners for provision of community work. Okay, it went to the Houston County, then uh, a request went to Houston County. I have the minutes from the Houston County meeting on October 7, 2003, that was um, to rezone our uh, rezone I'm not sorry, to, for the city to annex as R3 and R2 the, that zoning and with the stipulation that the sewer be in place prior to issuing building permits. Okay, that was approved based on those stipulations. Now I've got a little history here. There's a reason why we're so concerned about the corner of Danny Carpenter and Sandifer. I'd like to read to you. And it says, in, in August and October 2003, the county approved an annexation and rezoning request for county standards and the condition that the sewer be in place prior to issuing, issuing building permits. The city did not adhere to the sewer requirement and started issuing building and allowed the builder to build houses. The builder started to pump and haul sewage against Georgia law. When the county discovered this was happening in approximately 2005, then Chairman Sanders reminded the city and the city said that they would not issue certificates of occupancy until the sewer was in place and stopped the pump and haul. And we appreciated that. Some months later the city discovers that the county lot sizes for R2 and R3 are not the same as R2 and R3 for the city. The city then requests annexation and rezoning to HUD of the remaining, remaining portion of the subdivision that had not been previously annexed and a change to the already annexed section, section to HUD, even though homes were already built and occupied on some of those lots. The county objected to the vote HUD zoning, however, the city approved it anyway. This was in November of 2006. In 2009, the developer asked the city to accept a donation of approximately nine <coughs> acres between Wooden Eagle and Gates of Sandifer as green space. The city accepts. We applaud. Then it was discovered that the nine acres was not in the city. It was still in the county. The city then requested and received concerns by the county to annex the city, annex that portion since it was to be used as green space. We applauded. 
Next, the developer comes back to the city with his donation request and the condition that the city delete the requirement for one of the playgrounds in order to build houses on the playground site. Residents of Wooden Eagle and Santa Fe Road re residents voiced their objection to the deletion of the playground. City did not agree with the deletion of the playground either, and at this time we still do not know the status of that area. It should be noted that after the, this rezoning disparity was discovered, the three cities and county have having different lot size requirements that the then Vision 2020 group asked that the cities and county planning folks get together <coughs> and come up with a compromise that would have all lot sizes in the cities and the county the same. The effort failed. Our objective in reciting this history is that we don't want the repeat of mishaps to happen in that subdivision at the corner of Sandifer and Danny Carpenter. And it looks like we're on that what on the road that way because of the, the commitment to not allow an access onto Sandifer Road. And we have also the concerns. It's our it was our understanding that the county agreed to the annexation or concurred with the annexation and the city agreed that they would uh, have the zoning not be more, even though it was considered R2, not be more dense than the county's R3 standards. That is our understanding. We, we want to make sure that those two things are still in place. No access on the standard for road and that the zoning be no more dense than the R1 and the county. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wood. So good to that. Would anyone else like to address council? Thank you. <coughs> Item 15 of mayor items. And I only have one. Please please continue to support your mayor and your council these department heads staff and employees they deserve it they're giving you much value for your money and for their time again it has indeed been my honor and my pleasure to serve the citizens of Houston County and work with these fine men and women thank you for your participation and your support we stand adjourned